Hi. Thank you, everyone, for showing up here, hopefully not too hungover. Everyone have, like, caffeine? Good. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you're not here for, like, an in-depth SDN session, because this is OpenStack mentoring. So we have a, a lovely selection of uh, mentors and a mentee who's become a mentor. And so we'll start off with some introductions, first of all. Anne, do you want to get started? Um, sure, is this thing on? <laughs> good, uh, good morning, I'm Ann McCormick. I'm a tech leader at Cisco. Um, let me just say a little bit about what I do. I work on the MetaCloud side, which is a managed on-prem solution, and my task is bringing um, Cisco technology into the MetaCloud deployments. So I've been working on OpenStack for about two and a half years. This is my sixth summit, and it's, it's awesome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Trevor McCaslin. I'm a superstar developer for at and <laughs> Um, I've been a mentee of Amrith for quite some time, and uh, this time around, I've entered the speed mentoring to be a mentor this time. Thanks, Emily. My name's Amrith. I work with Verizon Wireless. I've worked with uh, OpenStack Control for about three and a half years. I don't remember how many summits this is, but the first one I went to was in Atlanta, and I'm the PTL for the Trove project, which is database as a service. And I'm Emily Hugenbrook, process of elimination there. And I'm involved with Women of OpenStack, and so I run the long-term mentoring and also the speed mentoring programs. So we wanted to give a couple of introductions to some of the different types of mentoring that you'll see in the community. Um, we won't talk in depth about all of them here, but how many people are familiar with outreachy mentor uh, internships? Basically, they're um, maybe six months long, they're pretty intensive, um, so you come out of them with a lot of in-depth knowledge, but it's a fairly small pool of mentees and mentors. Then we have Upstream Institute. Did anyone attend Upstream Institute maybe this weekend or at a past summit? I know when I started in OpenStack, I, I went to Upstream, so that's great. It's a, just a, a couple day workshop and it's face-to-face. -face. It's great for your first introduction into the community. They show you how to get you know, Garrett set up, they show you how to interact with the community, things like that. Then, uh, like our mentors have mentioned, we have speed mentoring, so we typically hold that on the first day of the summit, and it's a way for new people or not so new people to get to know some different leaders in the community and get to ask them a couple questions in sort of a, a fun speed dating-esque format. And we have long-term mentoring, which all of our, our mentors and mentees here have been involved with. And so that's over a period of several months. Uh, typically, we match people around summit time. It's not as intensive. It's great if you have occasional questions, um, but you know, don't need like an everyday check-in with your mentor. And then you've probably noticed that specific projects have their own mentoring. So there's onboarding, I think, for a, a lot of projects this week, which is, is fairly new. And, and if you look for any project, a lot of times they'll have something set up for how new people should get started, who you can reach out to, things like that. So to talk a little bit about the, more about the types of mentoring that, that I'm involved with, the speed mentoring, like I said, it's a summit activity. We had our third one at this summit. And it's a good way to meet some new people, maybe get some quick advice, like you're stuck on what's a good patch I can get started with, or um, I'm having trouble getting, getting in touch with someone, how do I do that? And we're averaging somewhere around 40 mentees for speed mentoring. Our long-term mentoring program, it doesn't require any face-to-face -face meeting, although we encourage people to meet up with their, their mentees and mentors at Summit. Uh, it's also been around since a, a little before Austin. We started both speed mentoring and long-term mentoring at about the same time. But with long-term mentoring, you don't have to meet face-to-face, -face, so it's good for people who maybe can't make it to summits. We're playing around with a lot of variables with it as far as the, the time frame and how we make matches. We've tried some automated matching, uh, how much guidance we give to mentors and mentees. We have a, a guide and, and we've been updating that. So we did our third round of matching after Bar the Barcelona Summit and we had 10 mentor-mentee pairs. 
And so we have uh, an online survey that you can fill out and then we match based on those survey results. So try to give you someone in your project or you know someone maybe who's on the same career path and a little farther along than you, things like that. And if you want more information, here's our wiki page. So that's a short introduction to mentoring, but let's get to the actual fun part of this, which is interviewing our, our mentors and our, our mentee here. So first question, how did you guys get involved with OpenStack mentoring? Uh, let's see, for me, um, I'm a relatively new mentor. I just got involved with the long-term mentoring just in the past six months. Um, I would say I'm at the point in my career where I'm starting to think about giving back and trying to get other people inspired and involved, um, particularly uh, women in engineering, uh, girls who code, it's, it's having a, a big pivotal moment now and that's really important to me. Um, something that I found out recently is that I, I took a leadership training for women in particular and they mentioned, you know, just by being a female engineer you are setting an example and um, th that's why I, I want to be involved and meet people and hopefully inspire them and it's, it's been a fantastic experience so far. I also um, volunteered for the speed mentoring for the first time and I, I really enjoyed that. I, I, went f I put on my career hat for that day instead of the OpenStack and, and I enjoyed it. I got to meet people who are just starting out and actually um, just starting out in OpenStack or in their career and I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I first heard about the uh, speed mentoring program when I was uh, just starting my career as a software developer and I was told I was going to go to the OpenStack Summit, so I'm like, okay, so what are all these kinds of events? And uh, the first one was the Austin Summit that I ever went to, so uh, speed mentoring was kind of new, and so I, I looked into it and I applied because it seemed like to be a perfect fit for me. You know, I'm trying to learn the OpenStack ecosystem and how to do, do things, and it sounds like a good opportunity for me, and it was. Um, and that's kind of like how I got involved. And I've been involved in, the, now this time I've been a speed mentor, and uh, now I'm I also participated as a trainer in the upstream university training. Cool, so I've, I've been doing this kind of thing for a while now. Um, I started working with OpenStack in Atlanta three and a half or so years ago. And so I naturally went looking to see what opportunities there were. Um, before coming to OpenStack, I've been, mentoring is you know, just another name for a formalized way of you know, working with other people, building a community. So I've done that before. Um, I've worked with uh, women who code as well. Um, and I think that's a great organization and well worth supporting. So. Cool. so what do you think makes a good mentor? Are there certain personality skills that you need or? Uh, right, um, so a, me a mentor, you'd have to have like a, a lot of different kinds of experiences because you really don't know what your mentee might come back and ask ask for you, so it's important to have like a, both a technical background and also like um, like a career background to, because you never know like what, what your uh, mentee might be asking you. So like if, like if you're working on the OpenStack and you d submit a patch and no one's reviewing your patch, you're gonna be wondering like, well, why, why is that happening? Is there something that I missed? Is it, is it, it's just like, it's not just write, about writing code, there's other things. So it's, in order to be a good mentor, you have to have both like a, a technical background as well as like a, a career like uh, mindset for moving forward in your path and so we have a good balance so that way you can field all the kinds of questions that your mentee might answer and also you you'd want to make yourself like available and uh, make, make sure that you can uh, f find a time to meet meet with your your mentee when, when uh, you can so Amrith and, and Anne what skills have you guys developed to, as mentors to, to make you better mentors well, in my particular case, like I said, I'm kind of just starting out, so I bow to Amrith, but um, it, it's, like I said, giving back is great, but I also um, am inspired by the people that I'm meeting. I'm, I'm getting, I'm actually getting a lot out of it as well. Uh, in terms of skills, I think having been in the industry for a while, like Trevor was saying, uh, being able to navigate career-wise and also still be on the technical side, I think it's a good combo to have. And, uh, that's it for me. Cool, so I, I'll take a slightly different tack of the answer and say, I think to be a good mentor, you need to know how to listen and you need to know how to ask good questions. You probably didn't realize it, but you asked me a lot of questions, I never gave you any answers. 
<laughs> you answered them out yourself. There's no point my projecting my bad experience onto you and trying to make you make the same mistakes. But I can at least tell you what mistakes I made and tell you not to make the same ones again. Go make your own is probably a better way to put it. So lead you in the right direction, but not, you know, uh, say go do this. Right, right, exactly. I want to kind of add on to that because, you know, a good, men a good mentor would be someone who, who's had a lot of failures. So that way, whenever a mentee comes, he's like, hey, I have this kind of cool idea. And then he's just like, no, don't do that. I've tried that. Please just do something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, brave people have died doing that. Go do something else is the thing which you want to say, but you don't say it that way. It's like, right. have you considered maybe, you know, a career in skydiving? Um, <laughs> things like that. That's, okay. it, that's my, at least my take on it is, you know, um, all the subject matter shit is all very useful. You know, I need to know about OpenStack and all that. That's really interesting. The real thing is I need to be able to listen to the question you're asking. And in a lot of cases, the question you're asking is not really the thing which is troubling you. It's the ability to understand what the hell is troubling you and give you, you know, the tools to go figure that out for yourself because there's no point in my just telling you what the answer is. All right. I was just going to say, I don't know if this is obvious or if we've mentioned it, but Amrith and, and Trevor have a mentoring-mentee relationship. I think it's long-standing, right? It's been a while. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. been a while. I think, uh, we, I think we, I'm, since now I'm now a mentor, I think I'm well on my way to, uh, we, I mean, we both agree that we're well on, on my way to being a contributor to OpenStack, so, I mean. <laughs> yeah, when the mics are off, I'll tell you guys what he does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think you guys were matched actually in our first round of long-term mentoring, so. Yeah, at that time he was just a developer, now he's a superstar Sorry, developer. developer. So. Well, that's right. due yeah, to that's your must mentoring, be something right? There, yeah. <laughs> so talk a little bit about the experience of, of being a, a, a mentor and a mentee. I mean, for, for mentors, is it like you have one mentee at a time? Do you have multiples? What, what's that like? So I was matched with um, a mentee out in California, I work out of the Boston area, um, who's relatively early in his career. He had a lot of aspirations for things, he, projects he wanted to get involved in with OpenStack. Um, in my case, our relationship kind of fizzled, I wanna say, and uh, maybe that's something we can discuss, but he, it turns out he got very busy. He was going for an associate's degree and also working full time, and it just didn't have the ability, the bandwidth to be able to carry on. So. Uh, that's my, my experience, but. So I've had, during the last couple of years, maybe four or five people I've been working with in different capacities. Um, one was a woman who was doing her PhD in computer science, so I was on her doctoral advisory committee. Um, Trevor, a um, couple of other people in other places, but each one was kind of different. In the OpenStack area, I'd say one, maybe one and a half at a time. Okay. So what have you all gotten out of the experience? And I guess I'll, I'll start with that. So that, that's a pretty <laughs> loaded question, because um, our, our uh, mentor, our long-term mentoring kind of went over an extent of almost like two, two summits. Uh, so. Um, at, at the beginning, it was, I, I didn't really know, know a lot about OpenStack, and it actually had like a lot of hardware requirements, so I had to make sure to get those all straightened out, and uh, Amrith was, that, that can be really tricky whenever you're working with virtual machines, and so Amrith was able to, um, we, he actually had like a, a screen sharing session with me one time where he came in, and he was just like, okay, so let's make sure you got everything straight, and he, he kind of uh, walked me through the steps on getting up my first, uh, well, debugging through one of my Tro Trove instances. Uh, but, but beyond that, I mean, that's just a technical side of it, but there's also like other, other things I was able to discuss with them, like right around like the first, um, like there is like other things whenever you're a software developer, it's important to develop certain skill sets. So like uh, one, one thing, for instance, is Amrit asked me if I had a blog, and I told him no, I didn't have a developer blog. So he's encouraged me to do things other than the OpenStack community to go out and uh, be, you know, be a good developer and, and uh, just be overall just like working towards my career. So like other examples is there's a local user uh, meetup group that I, in St. Louis that I was giving presentations for and every time I wanted to hear someone's advice, I would, I would ask, ask Amrit if he would wanna look over my slides and he would give feedback and good, good suggestions on my slide as well. Um, and 
And, I, and he's also like taught me like the, the importance of like contributing to OpenStack. It's it's uh, it's really like the importance of like not only making a good commit but also like the quality of like the code and how to do uh, how to fix. He helped me walking through like how to fix bugs and um, like what meaning how to make like meaningful reviews, not just like plus ones but minus ones and um, explaining in detail like with certain certain reasons why. And um, he's also talked talked about other issues like he's helped. Like he's also explained like the importance of like debugging uh, gates, as uh, as we know in Trove, um, and there's just uh, a, a lot of other things. And one of the one of the things that kind of stick out to me the most is when I was first starting my uh, OpenStack career and software career in, in general, I didn't really know like what direction I wanted to go. So I kind of did like a strength like like weakness analysis of of like of OpenStack in general, and I kind of. <laughs> He was he was sick at the time when I told told him this. I'm like, hey, I'm really, I'm not sure if I want to keep working on on OpenStack. Can we talk about it? And he's just like, oh man, he sounds like you need to have a call. So um, we talked about it, and basically at, at the end of it, he, he said he, he gave me some simple but like clear advice: is to uh, don't you shouldn't be going away from something, but instead you should be moving moving towards something else. And at that point, you know, he was Who right. Who told you that? I did. Yes. Oh, that was the drugs. Okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it kind of really made it clear to me. You know, it's a, I didn't really like OpenStack's pretty great and it's an awesome project and a good ecosystem to be a part of. So I don't know why I would want to move. Like I would move. Like I don't know why I want to. Like I don't think I could move towards something better than than what I had at the moment. Cool. Well, he did mention you were sick that day. Maybe it was an off day or. <laughs> No, it sounds like amazing advice. But yeah, just you know, it's just being a good mentor is being available. Because even though he was sick, he, he still wanted to talk to me because it was a very important time. Dedication. Do you want to know what I got out of it? Sure. I got a hat. <laughs> <laughs> we, our wonderful sponsors That's at Intel did these hats for all of our, our mentors for speed mentoring. So that was that was the big draw. Uh, Everyone kidding, likes ki swag. Kidding aside, I think. Um, whether we all want to acknowledge it or not, the fact that we're sitting in this room means we're really lucky. Um, you mentioned giving back. I don't know whether I'm giving back or I'm paying forward. Because where I am today is because a lot of people helped me, and I'm sure I'm gonna need some help in the future as well, so it's probably some of both. Uh, it's not like, I've arrived, now it's time for me to give back. I'm, I'm paying forward as well. Oh, I think I already mentioned, um, for me, what I get out of it is the energy and the inspiration for people who are just starting out because they're hungry and they're excited. And I, I think that that's really great energy to be around, so. Cool, so, so our mentors, what do you think makes for a good mentee? Are there certain qualities that are easier to mentor or? I, I, I have a slide which I'll show you. Sure. Okay. Is it here? Uh, yep. Just, uh, go ahead. All right. So I think the most important thing which a mentor needs to see in somebody is somebody wants to ask you a question. It's you, you want to be a mentor, great. You can't want something for somebody more than they want for themselves. That's a very clear indication somebody wants something very specific. Um, I'm not going to point out who it is, but that person knows exactly who it is. Uh, you know who it is. Um, Trevor was exactly the same way. Uh, he was very clear what it was he wanted, and you know that's that's the first step. Um, the other half of what it is to be a good mentee is unfortunately something you don't know up front. Um, it's something you only know much later. And that is, having been a mentee, the person turn around and, turns around and says, I'm now going to be a mentor, mm -hmm. which you just did. So that's the best thing possible. Thanks, Henry. Yeah, I really like giving back. I know OpenStax is a community. It's really important to help others, especially because uh, it's really important to, you know, if you send someone being like a new contributor, is to be extra friendly towards that person, point them towards the right documentation. and. Uh, really go with the extra effort to explain in detail what you need to do because you know it's, it's kind of our job 
to do that as part mm -hmm. of a welcome, as an open and open source community. Is that we need we need to be welcoming to everyone and uh, help help those out who need it the most. And I'll say that we've never had a problem getting mentors for the the program. I, I mean, this community is amazing with long-term mentoring, with speed mentoring. We always have uh, more mentors than we can use. Um, that's so good. that's a, a great, great problem to have. And do you have anything to, to add about what makes a good mentee? Uh, I think some of it's already been said. Somebody who's willing to um, describe where they're at and what they're looking for. But I also think in some ways you have to come with a little bit of an empty cup. And, um, be willing to take the advice of somebody with, with less experience, perhaps? I don't know how to say that exactly, but. So do you guys have any feedback on how we could make the, the mentoring programs better, and in particular, speed mentoring or long-term mentoring? Anything you'd like to, to see us do differently in the future? Uh, for me, just starting out, it was hard to kind of get the right cadence at first about um, how often to meet and, and people get busy and things like that. And then, like I said, it kind of fizzled and I, I take responsibility for that and my mentee got, got very busy. So I think maybe a little more guidance on how to get started and what the cadence should be. Um, I, I think it would be good to encourage um, kind of like showcasing like what the, the mentor and mentee have already done. So. Like I know we can already do that by like proposing talks and, and, and saying like, hey, mentor, mentee, we challenge these problems and this is how we did it. But I'd also like to see you know support from like the women of OpenStack to do like you know like have submissions from from people and then they they have like a series of lightning talks on it or something mm -hmm. like that just to you know really show like what what has happened like what how has OpenStack benefited from this mentor mentee relationship and or you know like things things like that basically like giving some kind of like like pushing them towards like accomplishing something so that way they can come back and like act, so that way they have like something to work towards together and, and can, um, you know, show, show off like you know, what they do. So it sounds, I mean, that, that would just kind of encourage like more participation and like, hey, we really got to get this done before, because the summit's coming up or like, you know, things, things like that. Cool, that's a great suggestion. So, so what was your question was, what is the feedback? <clears throat> what feedback we have? Um, so one thing which, uh, I don't know how many people in the room know about Stacklytics, but there's, everybody likes to measure stuff, okay? Um, and people are gold on these things which they measure. How many commits do you have? How many reviews do you have? And stuff like that. Um, I think a good thing which we need, since OpenStack is all about a community, a strength of a community or a strength of a community participant is how many people they're willing to invest in growing the community. So maybe we need to have a Stackalytics count for every company and say how many mentors are part of this company. Oh, that's um, interesting. Because if you're not giving back, you're just a moocher. Okay. Uh, if you have more mentors, it's way more valuable than you got a bunch of people fixing typos. So uh, I'd, I'd suggest that you know you should get company participants to pony up people and say, we're committing so many people to be mentors. That's a great suggestion, thank you. So I, I think we have about 15 minutes left, so are there questions from the audience? It doesn't have to be about these uh, particular mentoring programs, it can be anybody start trying to start up mentoring programs at, with their project or at their company, or I mean, we have some great mentors up here, so. Oops, <laughs> you're done. Okay. So I've been hearing a lot about uh, the development side. Is there any mentors on the operation side? Because I'm one of these administrators, engineers have been given OpenStack and here, learn it. <laughs> and I'm figuring it out, but I, and I love it and I'm consuming it, but I'm going at it blind. So I'm wondering if there's like a mentoring operational side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think that we've closed the mentoring program to, to just devs, um, but I don't know how many mentors I've seen on the ops, sign up on the ops side. So I, I'll answer the question for the video, but contact me later if you'd like. Um, there are a number of people in the community who have a lot of operator experience uh, who are also in the upstream university. Um, say, you know, 
name names. How about Dims or J Pipes or people like that? Uh, contact them and they will definitely help you with it. If you don't know them, send me an email and I'm happy to connect you with them. I think that's an interesting point though. Um, Emily, you would have some insight into this, I'd imagine, but how do mentors and mentees get matched up? Do you um, kind of dig into their area of interest when you're doing that? Yeah, so uh, if you go out to the, the wiki page and look at the, the survey that, that we have been using, there are some questions on there about what you're looking for, and we kind of try to ask it a variety of different ways, I'm trying to, obviously if you're a developer, it's nice and easy, we try to match you with someone in your same project or, or in your same area. Um, we've played around with some like automated matching programs. Um, I think we've found that geography sometimes is a big issue. Um, I, I've had some mentor-mentee pairs who have asked to be unmatched because Geographically, it wasn't working out, and they were having trouble finding like a time zone to meet. Um, but but sometimes it's worked out really well, you know. And, and there are some people where you, you just naturally get matched with someone who's a night owl and somebody else who's an early bird, even though they're uh, halfway around the world from each other. It it works out. So um, there there's I think a, still a lot of trial and error. So if anybody has some like fantastic suggestions of how to, to match people. Um, we'd be really open to that. Uh, perhaps area of expertise, like as Trevor was saying, like your list of accomplishments, maybe that would help match people. Did, did you pick Trove as what you wanted to work on? I thought yeah. it was Trove and Neutron, right? That's what right. you wanted to work on, okay. Yeah, so because you mentioned Trove, you were stuck here. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. so uh, yeah, uh, Trove, uh, Trove and I got a Trove Mentors, Emery, and then uh, went around Barcelona, so I'm gonna actually get a, get a, a Neutron Mentor as well. Cool, who'd you get? Uh, Chinas Samanchi, he's, uh, he, he's actually yeah. contributing a lot to Packer at the moment. Okay. I'm just wondering if you've ever considered doing presentation mentors, like for first time presenters, oh. hooking them up with someone who had a lot of experience, it just seems like it could be a way to fully develop the yeah, experience. Right. So that's one thing which I never got to do with Trevor. I was just telling him before this, before this panel started, and I've done this before with people. Uh, we did this at one of our mid-cycles, the Trove mid-cycle. We called it presentation karaoke, okay? So the, if you sign up for it, if you want to, I'll do it again. I, I probably still have the presentation. You don't get to see the presentation till 10 seconds before it starts. It's 10 slides long. The audience decides when to flip to the next slide. You see the slide when it goes on the screen and you keep talking. The idea is very simple. You're not gonna be comfortable on a stage doing a presentation unless you're comfortable you know, making a fool of yourself with a group of friends. You signed up for Toastmasters, you said. It's the same thing. Uh, if you can't ad lib, you know, it's not gonna work. So if you wanna do that, happy to do it again. We can, we can make it a regular part of the summit or forum or whatever you want. I feel like both of those work together. Mm -hmm. oh, By the way, that sounds horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the thing is, there's nothing to be scared about it because the last one we did, I still remember very vividly, the presentation, the title of the presentation, if you stepped on the stage, all you would know is, it's hair care products for men. <laughs> the entire presentation is pictures. No words on it, and the reason is very simple, because most people, the first time they do a presentation, they stand in front of the screen and they read the damn thing off the screen. I can read it just fine sitting in the audience. There's a bunch of pictures. You've got to ad-lib those pictures now. And it's like pictures of bald men, pictures who, you know, people who need a haircut, all kinds of things like that. But everybody has fun, and that way you're not, you don't have a lot of inhibitions when you get in front of an audience and you have to talk. You're not gonna get stage fright. That's basically the idea. Want to do it next time? That sounds like a great idea. I'll sign up to do it. Sounds like fun. <laughs> you want to do it? I, I, actually, yeah. I, okay. That sounds. I mean, it depends. It depends what the pictures are, but I guess I won't find they're out. All, they're all clean. I'll tell <laughs> you that much. Uh, so maybe partly related to this gentleman's question, I'm an operator. I've been operating in cloud for two to three years. Um, so maybe I could help with him or some folks like that. 
Um, you know, I've had thoughts about being a developer, but I've never had time to get into it. Even though I write Python, I have a networking degree, I've thought about getting into Unicorn and that sort of thing. But, you know, maybe it would be good to, like, see how that works. Uh, I also run a hackerspace in my community, and I have members that, you know, are really starting their career in Python, and there might be some uh, traction there. So maybe there's, like, resources I, I could use that might be easier to get them attached to the OpenStack community from my local community. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, where's, this, where's this community? I'm sorry? Where's the community that you? Uh, we're in Burlington, Vermont. OK. Um, there's like a local community you mentioned. There's like a user group meetup. Is that, you can uh, use the microphone. Uh, yes, sorry. <laughs> I, I should stand here. Um, yes, and I also uh, run the, uh, um, with a number of other folks, uh, the local Code for America Brigade. Um, we do it through uh, Code for DTV. Um, and that's a group that actually tries to move routinely. So we have people coming in sometimes thinking about projects and other things. And if I have someone who wants to get involved, you know, it's just maybe, how, how do I maybe succinctly do that without being so involved in an important program already? Like, how, how could I maybe wrap my head around how to talk to these people and maybe engage them in the OpenStack community? When, you know, sometimes I talk to such people and you, you're not very aware that OpenStack even exists. You're like, oh, AWS, and you say, oh, this is kind of like AWS. But, you know, it depends on how young they are and how much knowledge they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think they're always welcome to, to sign up for the, the long-term mentoring. Um, and one thing I think we're going to be getting more into is if we can't match people, if, if we don't have a mentor in that area, um, a lot of the projects have their own guidance. Um, so we'll try to kind of guide people toward uh, the project guidance. Yeah, so really just give them the URL and start from there, kind of, and like try and get moving through it. Okay. And yeah, and you mentioned Neutron. So I mean, I'm, I'm, I work on Neutron too, so you can talk, talk to me after this if you like. And actually, I was just going to mention, um, in previous summits, I don't know about this one, but they typically have a session on building a community. I've seen those before, like how to, how to build a, a meetup kind of thing. I don't, does anybody know if there was anything this time around? There was? So that might also be useful, and I know all of the videos are available after the summit, so. Um, I'm actually the owner of the St. Louis meetup. I just recently became the owner, and I... Yeah, it was running for, someone was running it for three years and he stepped down and now I'm the new owner. And um, so, uh, some good advice I, I would give is you could go to the Marketplace Mixer and talk to all the big, big vendors there and tell them like what kind of presentation you want from them. And most of them are, I found out to be really excited about just talking about engineering and technology. Because what, what I was uh, like afraid of is that everyone would just want to sell their products and services at the meetup. But it turns out they have a lot of engineers there at the Mixer too and they, they're just as enth enthusiastic about it as I was. Okay. Other questions? So out there, I, th I think we've heard from a, a couple people who are, are looking to, to build mentoring in, in their community, but um, so other people out there, are you coming to this because you're interested in being a mentee or interested in being a mentor? Mentees? Mentors? I think a little bit of both. Um, Microphone. I, I, I think it's important to recognize where, where skills drop off and where skills are, um, exist in a particular person. So having the ability to say, OK, well, I need help on Cinder, or I need help on Neutron, or I need help on this, but I know how to do, I know how to do this, I know how to build heat templates, I know how to build this or that. And I think that that's, I think it's important to have both of a two-way relationship with a mentor mentee, so it's not just a one-way street of giving a brain dump and there's only one way to do it. Very good point. So it sounds like more of like a collaborative, like, a working pair, because you're both learning from each other, but, right? And I think it could even bring in more people, you know, you, you might mm -hmm. be a, a mentor in one project and a, a mentee in, one, in another, um, mm -hmm. and, and you know, that's, that's totally fine, and I think that's a big part of how we grow the community. That's very true, you don't just have to be starting out in OpenStack in general. Mm -hmm. And I think just from like the mentor mentee pair, you you both like learn from each other anyway, whether whether it's technical or not. Have another quick question? Sure. So I ran into someone at the conference here, and she's a 
brother, uh, what's her name again? Um, Malinia? Um, I think I'm mis misremembering. Um, anyway, she's fairly well accomplished and um, uh, a, fa a fairly high up, I think, developer at Intel uh, for OpenStack. Oh, Malini? Who's yeah, Malini, Malini, yes. I think there you are. Um, but she was mentioning that she can't even find active clouds to really run on, to, to develop on technology that's actually being used. So like, it's like they're running you know, in a small laptop or a small little test environment that's not real, if that makes sense. And it's just like, it's hard to see where the problems hit the road when, when you're always in almost a theoretical world, if that makes sense. So uh, I, the cloud I built was basically a, uh, a nonprofit cloud with all 501c3s as tenants. Um, so, I mean, I keep having this idea that it could be a training cloud, um, that we could say, you know, maybe three nines is okay. You know, that, that these organizations aren't so nervous about a little downtime. It's not millions of dollars to them. So, so maybe there's an opportunity there, and is it, has that ever existed in the community? I don't know of anything like that that's existed, but I think that's a, a great idea because, yeah, certainly, um, testing things out and unit testing on your laptop is a lot different than it running in production. All right, thanks. We have a couple minutes if anybody has any other questions or you know, feel free to, to come up and find us afterwards or if you see us in the hallway and, and wanna ask us questions or see us on, I think we're all on IRC. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, keep, keep mentoring, keep being a mentee, keep learning, and um, I want to say thank you so much to yep. our mentors thank here you. because they do a fantastic job and the community. Thanks for the hat. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Emily, for being an awesome moderator. And Thanks. for all that you do with mentoring. Thank you.